Hey there folks, how's it going? No messing around, there's a lot going on in the world of Roscoe M68K, so let's jump right in. I've got some great stuff to talk to you about. We've got an update to the Roscoe M68K main board that's got an onboard FTDI. You're gonna love that. We're gonna go through some de debugging with it. We've got a brand new product launching pretty soon that's a programmer for ATF1502, five volt CPLDs, the last five volt CPLD that you can still buy, I think. Awesome stuff, so there's an update coming on that. And we're also gonna give a very brief update, but there's a bigger video coming on this one with the Roscoe M68K keyboard. Prototypes are back. It's all looking fantastic. PS2 mouse support. It's the whole thing. Let's jump in. First of all, we've got an all new spin on the Roscoe M68K. I'm really excited about this. It's, it's an absolutely fantastic ease of use. Makes it much more convenient to work with. You don't need those FTDIs, as I say, it's fantastic. Especially for things like GDB debugging. But before I show you that, I don't have the new Roscoe M68K new lib tool chain installed. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to get that installed. There is gonna be another video coming soon on that because there's been amazing progress with it. Watch out for that one. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed because you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. But right now I'm just gonna show you real quick how to install the, the Chris dev preview. So it's head only, it's in brew. Let's do that. I've already tapped, as you can see, I've already tapped the homebrew tool chain. So it's part of our tool chain, the usual one that if you've got a Roscoe M68K, you've probably already got this tapped. This is where we install GCC from, it's where we install MAME from, another video coming soon on that as well. Um, Vaz and Vili, all that stuff, it's all in this tool, in, in this um, tap, in this homebrew tap. So I've already tapped it, this command, so brew tap, uh, Roscoe M68K homebrew tool chain. Once you've tapped that, you can then just install stuff from here. So all we'll do is brew install, uh, I can't type. I don't know what's going on with me today. I cannot type. And it's just Roscoe M68K tool chain at 13. And this gets you M68K GCC 13. Latest bin utils, again, M68K. And all of the new lib integration and everything's integrated. So you've just got a Roscoe M68K toolchain that just works without any special sort of link script. Flags to the compiler to select runtime libraries and stuff like that. It's got GDB support built in. It's really nice. I'm quite happy with it. The community seems to be liking it. Let's get it installed. This will take a while, so we'll probably skip ahead at this point. Still going. I think it's like an i3 from 10 years ago. It's going to take a little time. Okay, so that's done. It did take like an hour or something on this old computer, but that's fine. It's installed, as we can see. We can now do get the version from the tool chain. So we see there we've got M68K Elf Roscoe GCC version 13.2. That's now a full tool chain. It's got a full new lib lib C already integrated with it, it's all good to go. Now normally, as I say, using GDB with the Roscoe M68K does require two FTDIs, so you've got one for your regular output and one for the debugging connection. That's no longer a thing, thanks to that built-in FTDI. So let's get that plugged in, and we just get the USB, and that just plugs in there, and as we can see, that will immediately power the board. We've got the flashing LED. Everything's up and working on that. What we're going to need here is a little program just to test it with. So we'll make a new directory for that. And we'll just test it in test.c. So all I need to do is include whatever I need from the standard library. And also we've got some Roscoe M68K specific libraries and headers that come with the tool chain, including the debug one. That's fine. We'll use that. Um, so we'll just print F and then I call the breakpoint function. And what that does is that will cause the board to pause and wait for GDB to connect. So that's cool. Hopefully that's fine. We can then do Uh, GCC that, I'm going to output that to, we'll just call it, this output's an ELF, which will then have to do another step to convert that to a binary. I do want the ELF in this case, you can give a 
the command line argument to go straight to a binary, you can upload straight to the board, but I want the alpha because that helps with debugging as you'll see in a little while. Try and compile that. There we go. What we've got now is an elf, and I can just double check by disassembling it that that is an M68K elf as I'm expecting. Um, we need Roscoe in there. That's it. That's more like it. That looks pretty good. We've got the initialization code. We've got all the finalization code. All of that's provided for you. All of the sort of the bootstrapping for the board and everything that's all provided by the tool chain. So it should just work with our main. So with that done, we open up our serial program. You can use Minicom for this. I use serial, you do you, hyper terminal on Windows, whatever you've got. And here we've got two ports. These are the two ports exposed by the FT232 on the Roscoe M68K board, recent edition. We have USB serial 14600 and 14601. This will be URA, this is the one where the main output of the board and the input goes then this one will be the debug port on URB. We'll need that in a few minutes, but for now, let's just open the first one, port one, and make sure it's set to 115.2891, which is always what it has been. And then just to double check everything's working, we'll hit reset on the board. And there we go, we can see that that's all working and that's all fine. So we need to send the program over to the board. And before we can do that, remember we built that elf but we actually need a flat binary. So that's easy to do with object copy. Binary test.elf to test.bin. So what we're doing here, we're saying copy this elf to this binary file with an output, the dash O of binary, which is built as a flat binary. And if we look, we've now got test.bin that's the flat binary we can send to the board. So it still uses Kermit. We'll send that test.bin file and we'll send it as Kermit. Didn't build it with GDB. <laughs> Forgot to build it with debugging. Never mind, we can fix this. So let's go back up. GCC command that we had. And we need to pass dash G dash M G D B. So dash G is for the it's the standard GCC option for debugging info. And dash M G D B is a Roscoe M68 K specific. That gets GCC to link against the Roscoe M68 K debug libraries. So let's do that. We will redo that object dump command. Ob that object copy command, sorry. So this is ready again, it's warm booted, it's ready for another receive. So what's happened now, as you can see, the LEDs have stopped blinking, the whole board's frozen, it's waiting for us to connect up a debugger. We want to run gdb-b on 15200, so that just sets the board rate that we'll be using through the, through the debugging. I'm going to do this step by step, there are various ways you can do this, but I'm going to do it step by step, so you, just so you can see what commands need to be done. So first of all, I'm going to set the architecture to M68K. I'm going to load the ELF file, and this is why we wanted that ELF file, because that ELF file contains all of our debug info and stuff. Having that ELF file just makes things easier when we're stepping through and stuff. So I'll load that, load the symbols from that file, and then we target remote. So dev cu usb serial uh, yeah. 14601. That's quite annoying that it can't find the, the files. That's a little problem that we've got. So it can't, it can't find the new lib files, unfortunately, when installed from Brew. It does find them if you build it locally, um, but that's not a problem. It's not the end of the world. So we're broken in at the minute. We're connected to the board. If we single step, that will take us back into our main. And we can see here that we've got main at test C7. From here, you can do all of the normal breakpoint stuff, single step in, you can continue, you've got everything. You can hook this up to VS Code. And again, one USB cable. You don't need those two FTDIs. Probably going to do a separate video on a full debugging session and all of the features that you've got with GDB. But for now, that just shows you one cable setup, power, both serials. So there you go, folks. That's the Roscoe M68K onboard FTDI. That's coming soon into the store. Keep an eye out for that. Launching real soon. I'll put links in the description. Do check it out because it's, it's a lot of fun.
One of the things that we're looking at doing with Roscoe M68K is moving these chips, some of the gals, away from sort of four individual chip into one ATF1502. Now this is a great chip. It needs a specialist programmer, so the Atmel programmer that you can buy, which I'll put on the screen right now, is about 70 pounds here in the UK. You can program them to reuse the JTAG pins, but that means that then it's JTAG locked. You can't then program it again using those same JTAG pins. This little board, I put this together just to sort of take care of those problems. Everything works through USB. There's some custom software that I'll link to down in the description. It's great. It's really integrated with the software and we'll just do some chip programming and we'll see what happens. This is, a, if in case you've not noticed, this is a fresh machine. So we'll just clone it with HTTPS. That'll be fine for now. That will do. Have a look. So in here, we've got the source for everything. But as I say, I've already installed that. For this test, really, is just these files that are in test CPLD. And so here we've got, as you can see, we've got an XSVS file. We've also got a JED and an intermediate SVFs. Now, the programmer supports all three of these. I'll show you how that all works. So as you can see, we've got this chip installed already. This is just a 1502 that I'm using for testing today. And this is the chip we're gonna program. This blinking light here tells me that the programmer is connected. It's got power, but it's not connected by the actual device. With the programmer list command. And we can see there that we've got one device and it's it's the device we're expecting it to be so that's always good isn't it it will select that device by default so whenever i'm working with it as long as i've only got one programmer or i want to use the first one that's connected i don't have to actually tell the software which device to use it will just pick this one by default so that's great really nice and convenient to use so the first thing we'll do is we will let's see what's on this chip already um whether it's blank or not so we'll do a, a check we'll call the right program and we'll do a quick check and you can see now the active light is lit up as it's doing things that's just down there so that's lit up it's doing stuff and there we go this is blank so let's program something to it and we will atfu program and we'll start with the xsvs file which all this does is just toggles a pin when another pin's toggled it's, just, it's a very simple one i'll put the code somewhere maybe on screen to program it. So if we watch this, you can see that the board's ready. It's not active. As soon as I hit that return, board goes active and we're away. We're off to the races, we're programming. It's reasonably quick, but it's not super quick, but it's still sort of doing a little bit of debugging and stuff. Also this XSVS, XSVF is larger than it needs to be because again, it's got some debugging info, some X comments in there and stuff. So there we go, that's that chip program. Success, we can do a quick check. And again, I can't type. We can do a quick check. And it's not blank. It, it tells us immediately, it gets sort of 1% in and tells us immediately, it's not blank. There's something on it. It's cool. And what you could do at this point, if you wanted to, is you could use the, the pin breakouts on the either side of the board and use those to actually test your design and connect it up to whatever board that you're developing. Super flexible, nice and handy, easy to use. If we then want to blank it again, we can just erase it. There we go, that's that erased. Check it, and it's now checking. As soon as it gets further than the very beginning, really, you can tell that it's blank. There we go, fully blank, happy days. We can also program a JED file straight away. Now you see this will be a bit quicker. It was about 11 seconds last time. So let's see how much quicker it is this time. Seven seconds for that one. And just to show that we can program still without Erasing, um, as long as it's not locked. Let's try that SVF file as well. Again, just transparently supports all three. Whichever you pass it, it will figure it out, convert it into the actual format that's needed by the programmer, and away it goes. And if you've got a JTAG locked or secured CPLD, there's also a command line switch you can pass, force erase mode, which will re-enable those JTAG pins, get rid of those security bits, and, and give you a chip you can use. I do have, in that test CPLD directory, a lock JTAG design as well. And again, I'll put the code for this somewhere, maybe in the description. But what this does, this actually reuses those JTAG pins on the ATF-1502. Now, when you, if you're using AT-MISP, it would warn you at this point that you're gonna, you're about to lock the chip basically, because with that programmer and the, with the microchip programmer, 
you can no longer program that chip once you've reused those JTAG pins because they're obviously not JTAG pins anymore. However, we can get around that with this programmer. Let me show you how that works. First of all, program that. And whichever, we'll just do the SVF. They're both the same one. So program in that. And now if we check, it will correctly tell us it's not blank. However, the reason it's told us it's not blank is not quite the same. It's because it actually couldn't communicate with it. So if we try and erase it, it can't. I just get a failure because the JTAG pins are now being used as part of my design. It cannot be programmed. It can't be communicated with via those JTAG pins anymore. However, we have a trick up our sleeve. And what we can do, this would normally need a more expensive programmer from Microchip. Um, or there are others, there are third party ones, but it's, they're, they're more expensive. They're the parallel programmers. But what we can do, we can do an erase. We can pass the minus F flag to force it. And that will force the issue with this little programmer. You can see it's talking to it. The activity lights go in, everything's working. And that chip now has, it's blank again, and it now has the JTAG pins completely re-enabled. So we can check it. Seems to be working fine. It's not a problem. And again, that's because this, kind of forces the, that's why it's called the force flag, it forces the issue, and we can then program it again with uh, ATFP, no, program, and we'll just program it again with our toggle one, we can program it fine, it'll work, so you want to reuse the JTAG pins, but you don't want to lock the chips, you can use this programmer, no problem, to unlock those pins again and reuse the chips, it's great, I'm quite happy with it. So this is coming soon. It's in community testing at the moment. As I say, links in the description. It will be in the store. It probably is in the store by the time you watch this. So check out those links. This is half the price as well of the Atmel programmer. So yeah, go get one. If you're interested at all in the 1502 or 5 volt CPLDs in general, go get one. So we're out of time for this video, unfortunately. But just so you know, for next time, we're going to be doing an update on the Roscoe M68K keyboard. Prototypes are back. I'm really happy with it. It's looking amazing. PS2 mouse directly plugged into the back. Fantastic retro keyboard. I think you're going to love it. Fully mechanical. It sounds great. It's all being 3D printed currently. Fairly great expense by JLC PCB. So another video coming up on this. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you haven't already. Stick around, folks. It's going to be awesome. There's some great stuff coming up. Oh, and also works as a USB keyboard, so it's got all your retro goodness. Plug it into your PC or your Mac and use it as a retro keyboard, a, a modern keyboard as well.